Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. And today I want to do a brief overview of automation in Logic. How to get what you need out of automation quickly and easily, because at the end of the day, automation is like the secret weapon of mixing. It's where you get to tell Logic that you want your plugins and your instruments and so on to adapt to the the changing dynamics of a mix over time. It's amazing. So things are just kind of moving around without, you know, you having to intervene once, you know, set those patterns. So that sounds sort of, you know, woo woo or out there. So let me dig in real quick in like two sentences. Automation is where you get to tell logic, okay, at this point, I want the volume to go up on this drummer track. And then at this point, I want it to go down. And then... I want to change the panning here. I want it to move over a little to the left and a little to the right. And then, you know, over here, I don't even want to hear the drums. So let's make it muted. All right. So then as you hit play, Logic is going to adapt these values over time. You can watch it all right here. So as you can probably see and assume, there is a lot of possibility here. And I did a lot very quickly. So let me just sort of backtrack here. All right, so let's get rid of all this automation. So number one, key command A opens up automation. And anything that you can th possibly think of that you might want to automate to change over time, you probably can. Like if you dig into here, there's the main controls like volume, pan, solo, mute. But you can also automate stuff within your instruments like the hi-hat. We can change the gain or the leakage or mute it. In the drum kit, channel EQ, you can adjust slopes and filters and turn them on and off. And the gain and the compressor, you can adjust the attack. So a good example would be like a vocal. This singer starts out super quiet, like almost whispering. So with the compressor here, you know, because they're whispering, you want some compression. So you're going to bring the threshold down so the meter's popping a little more. But then later on in the song, the singer starts to really belt it. So with these current settings, your singer could end up, you know, getting like 30 dB of gain reduction. That's like way too much. Your singer will sound smashed and impotent and sound weird. So you want to adjust the threshold so at that louder part, it's not hitting the vocals as hard, maybe a little harder, but, you know, it's staying relatively, you know, tasteful. So we could go into the compressor here using this menu in the automation options. Find threshold right here. You can select that part of the song. Say this is where the singer gets super loud. So I'm going to use the marquee tool by holding command, because I have it as my command tool here. Click, and now it will create four points. And we can bring, we'll say we'll bring the threshold up so it's not compressing as hard. So when it hits that louder section, this compressor's threshold will dynamically change. So you see it, it I'll make it super obvious. Right? That's the beauty of automation. So the default when you open automation using key command A is volume. And then there's the drop down menu, lots of options. So let's say I adjust the volume on this and then say I want to adjust the panning. So I adjust the panning, but you know, I might want to work on my automation side by side. You know, I may have to adapt the volume as I change the panning because of pan laws and other things that are, you know, not in the scope of this video. Well, I don't want to flip back and forth between pan and volume all the time. So I can use this disclosure triangle on the left side of the track header. And look at that. It opens the volume and it will open whatever the next parameter that's been affected with automation. 
And then if you don't want a lane, so for some reason I've got a pan lane that I don't care about, in the upper left-hand corner is an X and I can get rid of that. So this is a very structured and easy way to play with automation. It didn't always used to be like this, and it's fantastic thanks to the latest updates in Logic Pro 10. So then there is the opportunity to use your fader and your mouse to adjust automation. So again, vocals would be a really good candidate. Vocals, they change over time, and you may want to adjust the volume of the vocals, and they call that vocal riding, where you ride the fader while listening to the vocals, and you adjust the volume over time. So there are various options for this. If you go into the field right here, below your stereo output and group, there's four options here. You've got read, touch, latch, or write. Now read is when Logic just reads the automation that you've set, so it's just playing back. It's just playing back the automation. So you see the level change and the panning change and all sorts of things change. Touch is where you touch a parameter and you adjust it during playback and Logic will write automation accordingly. So let's do that. Right? But say I go down here, let me do a little more writing. And then Logic, you saw, just jumped back to zero when I stopped handling the fader. And in touch mode, Logic, once you're done playing with a parameter, Logic will set that fader or knob or whatever back to wherever it started initially. So it was set to zero, so it returned to zero. But if it was set to negative 10, it would return to negative 10. Let's do that. Let's go like that. Okay, and then let's write. Over here. And it went back to negative 16. Now, in the case of latch mode, it's not going to return to anything. I'm going to write automation by playing with the fader. And wherever I leave it, once I let go of the fader, it just stays there. And it just stays there until I hit spacebar and stop, at which point it stops writing automation. Then there's write mode. And write mode starts working right away. As soon as you hit play, it's writing automation. So I'm not even going to touch this fader. Just watch. And we go back to the volume. And it just stuck to, you know, absolutely quiet because I didn't touch it. Write mode is always writing as soon as you go. And you can see that logic reverts to touch because write mode can be very damaging when you've spent a lot of time writing automation. You don't really want to hang out in write mode. Usually you want to go back to read if you've set automation that you're pretty proud of and happy with. So then it just plays back the automation that you've written. It doesn't write anymore. Right. There's a little more behind Logic's automation tools and options that are pretty freaking awesome, like this, trim. So say you need to, you've, you've written all your automation, but it turns out later on, your track's too quiet, the vocals are too quiet, these drums are too quiet or too loud, and you need to adjust the whole track's volume. But you have to adjust all the automation that you've written as well, right? So you think, well, I might have to select everything and then drag it up or down. That's kind of a pain, isn't it? Instead, you can use trim here to adjust the automation across the board. And then you're good to go. And that's pretty freaking awesome. Then there's also track-based automation or region-based automation. So you can see there's a difference here. Track automation, if we squeeze this up, you can see that the automation line is highlighted all the way to the end of the project. We're in track or region-based automation, you don't see anything. But if we hone in on the region, and do that, boom. You can see that there's automation, but it doesn't ex go beyond the region. There's a, there's a very practical, amazing reason for this. Track-based automation is like, okay, you just want to write automation across your track. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you don't want to you don't want to repeat your automation. You've set it very carefully and thoughtfully across the track. Beautiful. 
But say you're working on drum loops and there's one particular section of the drum loop or a loop that you want to emphasize each and every time. Well, with region-based automation, you can then hit L for loop and look, the automation is applied at the same exact spot on that loop forever and ever and ever wherever you use it. And that's really helpful. So I'm gonna get rid of this track lane. I'm gonna duplicate this track. I'm gonna drag this down. I copied this to a second track lane and you can see the automation remains the same for the drum loops. You know, say I want the drum loop to only go not like that. I always forget where the heck the loop thing is. But, you know, you can just loop to there. And look, it's there. If you go to track-based automation, we'll switch to volume so you can see that. If you duplicate the track and you drag it, it drags right along with it. It's fantastic. Now there's one other thing I want to demonstrate to you, and that is being able to adjust the curve. So look, that's that's a pretty that's a pretty linear curve and you know maybe that's not what you want you want it to you want it to be more of an actual curve right so hold shift and control you get the automation curve tool and start to drag up and down and look at that you can actually have more of a real curve or if you drag left or right something steeper i guess that would be steeper less steep but more dramatic so just hold shift and control and you can adjust the curve easily by clicking not on a node, but in between the nodes. So I hope that was helpful to you. If it was, I highly suggest as always subscribing to the YouTube channel or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Thank you so much.